Welcome to 3 PNR. I'm your host, Adam R. And joining me for this episode is Norm Pardo, filmmaker and author. Norm, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing great. Doing great. So the purpose of our podcast is to focus around Nicole Brown Simpson and the murders involved with OJ and now this uh, Glenn Rogers character. Uh, tell me what got you on the path of finding this information. Well, when I first met OJ, he wouldn't answer a question I gave to him. I asked him, basically, do you know what happened? And did you do it? And he kept giving me, you don't want to know what happened, let it go. And that wasn't the answer I wanted from him. So I put you on this path of uh, discovering truth, information. Um, yeah, I couldn't live with that. You know, if you don't want to know what happened, let it go. Meant that he knew what happened. Yeah, you could see in his at the time. I was a kid when it happened, but I remember looking at his face, and it was a tremendous amount of stress and a tremendous amount of pressure on him. And uh, you know, that was that for me at that time as a kid. I'm like, well, this this has got to be the guy. And then, you know, fast forward to a year ago, I stumbled across your documentary, uh, "Who Killed Nicole Brown Simpson," and it changed things for me. Uh, it, it significantly changed. I didn't know Glenn Rogers was even in the picture and I didn't realize the, the tremendous amount of mishaps on the behalf of the LAPD at that time. There was a lot of mistakes made. A lot of evidence was tampered. Um, the crime scene was polluted. So n none of it was handled correctly. And the fact that no. this Glenn guy got zero attention throughout the entire thing, mind blowing. It is really, uh, and, I, and I'm still getting information to this day. That's the thing. It, it never turns off. Once you turn this on, you can't turn it off. I had a guy call me last week that played pool with Glenn Rogers the day before it happened. So people still call me and they still give me their information, even though, in my opinion, it's over. Indeed. So Glenn Rogers, uh, I've, I've became familiar with this guy since we'd spoken first and it's a lot. I mean, it's the amount of things he was involved with or suspected of is it's, you know, he, there's a Andy Jewell stabbed to death. Uh, Linda price was stabbed to death and, and basically executed the same way as Nicole, right? Throat slash. Uh, yep. There was another woman too, uh, uh, Tina Cribs in Tampa, Florida, very similar uh, murder style. I mean, this, it, the MO's there, and I fail to see why law enforcement didn't make a, a grander connection to this as far as um, the case went. Well, I think they did. It's just they couldn't do it. They couldn't bring it out to the public. You got to remember that they came out with their their thing was OJ went into a jealous rage and did it all. So it's very hard to go back from a jealous rage and say, oh, but he hired this guy who went with him. Yeah. So they... They jumped out too fast in front of the media, in my opinion, and they couldn't backtrack. Yeah, when you, when you talk in terms of a jealous rage, um, the way the crime scene with Nicole and Ron appeared to me, it's definitely premeditated. It was confined to a small, dark area. Uh, so a jealous rage, I would imagine, is something you just do. It's impulsive and, you know... You don't have time to go home and, and, and collect your faculties and take and book a flight to Chicago. And there's so many unanswered questions. Uh, again, with this guy, you know, Roger, who killed a, a gentleman by the name of Mark Peters, uh, and burned his body, essentially, to steal his, his belongings for money, etc. This guy has the makeup of, of somebody who they should have had in the foresight. He should have been, I, I didn't even hear that name throughout the trial. And I, I tried to rewatch that. I didn't see his name even mentioned there. And well, they knew they knew he'd done it. It's just uh, they interviewed him. He said that there's a they they interviewed him and he's he admitted it on tape. You just can't get to the tape. They won't they won't release that document because he was an informant, and uh, so it's it's locked up right now. But he sent in his letter that if you want to know the truth about what really happened, open up this file and you'll get all the answers you want. He said that they did a taped interview of him right after the murders. Yeah, I mean, his brother Clay basically said, my brother not only potentially did this, but has committed enormous amount of crimes. Because the guy, oh, yeah. he evidently Roger called his brother and said, 
you know, I met this girl, Nicole, she's rich and I'm going to take her down. And then like a day after the phone call, she's dead. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's bizarre. And again, it got no, even your, so your documentary, which altered the way I think about the OJ case, um, I struggle to find that now. I was yeah, spe- well, they, everybody takes down everybody's things. They, 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 want, they want it hidden. They want it to go away. My movie will come back out. It's just right now I'm in a fight to keep it, you know, alive. Yeah. And People I'll- keep taking it down. They keep, they want it to go away and I'm not letting it go away. So, yeah, but I do have a book out now that they are, they're trying to stop. Uh, Who Killed Nicole now is in book form. It's even more in-depth than the movie, so I got him on that one. Yeah, the, <laughs> and the book itself I'll put in description, which I've, I've ordered for myself. Um, yeah, you would like it. Hey, I, I'll send you one. Yeah. The, I, you know, I, 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 I've got some uh, special books that are my own. I, 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 so I, I can I, send you one. Yeah, I'd love to have one. You know, I mean, it's it's... There are a lot of things surrounding the OJ case, um, and in my opinion, it's it, in that era. In that era, with LAPD, there's a lot of questionable shit going on, right? You had the riots as a result of Rodney King. There was a lot of the corruption they were stating in that in that era, and so I think something is like Glenn Rogers. They missed a ball on. They didn't want to publicly admit it because they they were so fast to handcuff OJ and, and go on the theory. To ha- I'm not saying OJ didn't have anything to do with it. Um, I'm under this, the impression that maybe OJ influenced it to happen. Right. Well, there- OJ was there when it first started the fight between him and well, the first fight. You understand it. The first fight was him. Uh, actually it was Glenn Rogers and, uh, uh, Ron Goldman, Ron Goldman. That was the first fight that ensued out in the parking lot. I mean, in the in the back room. See, O.J. was already in the gate. You know, Glenn Rogers brought uh, Goldman into the gate, and that's when the whole argument started. And it was supposed to be just an argument, but it went a little bit further than that when they had cornered him into the corner, and that's how O.J. got his finger cut. You know, Glenn uh, didn't pull the knife first, in my opinion. I, I believe it was uh, Ron Goldman pulled the knife, cut O.J. O.J. ran. Because that's what Glenn said. He said he ran like I ain't going to say it on on the air. But no, you can say it. Feel free. He ran like a bitch <laughs> <laughs> and left Glenn sitting there with a killer. And he said, and, and he said he, he would hit him, and he'd come back up. He wasn't an easy one to keep down. Right. Yeah. And, so, you know, and Glenn's not a little guy. He's six foot, about two hundred pounds at this time. He's a pretty big guy. And Ron Goldman's yeah, a pretty fit guy as well. Yes. So both of those. They just fought basically to the end. Glenn couldn't even go to work the next day. We have a receipt from his employer that he claimed the ceiling fell on him in his apartment. He wasn't able to go to work. So he was pretty beat up himself. Yeah, there's this depiction. I saw it on YouTube the other day. Um, Like, I guess, a a reconstruction and animation where it shows Glenn. uh, uh, This is them obviously putting Glenn in the limelight for this murder where Glenn is fighting with Ron, uh, stabs Ron, Nicole comes out, he stabs her once and her head hits the wall, she goes unconscious. He then turns around and starts, you know, finishing off Ron, and then he cut Nicole's throat. And Yeah, that's, that's not correct. But that's just, that's the theory that the police wanted you to believe because they had to keep O.J. there during the time of the murders. Right. The bottom line was him and uh, Ron fought. Ron got killed. After the fault was over, he went to O.J.'s house to get the money O.J. was going to pay him. And he said he wasn't paid to kill somebody. He was supposed to pay to thug somebody down, so he was pissed at O.J. And when he went to O.J.'s house, O.J. had already left for the airport. Huh. So to get his money, he said he went back, made a phone call uh, to Nicole that he had some nose sugar for and went back to her house thinking she'd have money when she came to the door and he'd get paid. You know, another big factor too, uh, so circling back to Glenn, or um, yeah, I'm sorry, Glenn. He, he, from childhood, from what I'm what I'm reading about him, he had impulsion, anger, and, you know, suspected of, of violent crimes and murder prior to that. And allegedly yeah. he met Nicole, was going to paint her house, and saw just another victim. 
Now, a year, a little over a year ago, when I first stumbled upon your documentary, I did a little research, and at that time, I saw a photograph, and I know I saw it, of Glenn in a bar with Nicole in the background, and I can't seem to find that photo now. <laughs> like, it's, it, like, it disappeared. In this day and age, with the viral internet, uh, I can't come across, unless someone doctored that photo, I'm not sure, but I... No, that. that that photo has been taken by the feds. The feds took that photo. They took all the stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I had that photo at one time, and it was gone now. So it, they raided my office in Wisconsin. I called the guy up and said, I need all the stuff you're working on for this case. And within an hour after that phone call, they had a whole bunch of people come in there with, um, like, machine guns dressed in black. Huh. And... Uh, they took the locks off the doors, busted them off with crowbars, and took everything in there that had OJ's name on it, every crate. That's so bizarre. You know, it's, again, a, over, a little over a year ago, I stumbled across your documentary. I'm fascinated by a show, Friends. We, and then I, I watch it twice. I watch it a second time with Friends. I'm like, you got to see this. Like, there's, I, you know, it's at that time, I didn't even know about Glenn Rogers. And I, that should let the world know that this guy has a bigger part in this because it, it seems to be like they just completely suppressed it. And then, you know, here it is. You and I are talking about we're going to do the podcast. I'm going to watch the doc again, and I can't find a documentary. It's crazy. Or the pictures. Yeah, well, it's coming back out. I've got a group that's putting it back out there. Right now they're just somebody's jamming it up. Strange. And I don't know who's in the background doing it. I mean, but, you know, it's been a fight. I mean, just my book deal. You know, when they, I got a book deal from Simon and & Schuster, and the night I was supposed to sign that deal, I died. Oh, yes, yeah, so you were telling me about that. You had a, a, a life event. Um, yeah, it was a whole deal there. I was, we was at a party celebrating that, that we were going to have a book out, the Who Killed a Cold book and everything. And, and uh, I was just standing there, and all of a sudden, I just dropped dead. And they, and, ne uh, they never found out what caused it or nothing? Nope, they said it had to be something in my system, but I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't even drinking, so there was no logical reason for me just to drop dead in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but it was a party with a lot of OJ's people there. A lot of people were there, you know, so who knows what they could have given me. So glad that you're still here. Very glad. Let's go back. Well, it, was a it was sort of funny to a degree because when I was laying there dead, I died for seven minutes. And I was just laying there dead, and this one guy came up to my wife, and he said, I got this pill, and you want me to give it to him? And she just looked at him and said, he's dead. Give him anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> it was sort of funny. I, I think back at just trying to picture her telling him that, because he said, she said you were dead. Give him whatever. I hope I didn't hurt you. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, I was dead. You know, they, you know, they had to bring me back to life with machines. But on the way to the hospital, I signed the, the book contract. I had him do it in the ambulance. I told my wife, give me that thing. I'm signing it in the ambulance. Uh, make sure it gets out there because it's good information. Yeah, so it is. People need to know the truth and, and all this other stuff is make-believe. But now that you see the media and what it's all about, people understand it's all make-believe out there. Yeah, it's especially when you watch the news. You ever? I watch the news and you see people, it, like I live in Florida, when a hurricane's coming, it played out like a dramatic thing on the news. and they had, it, It's like they incite fear. Uh, to get people to watch their news station, right? We got to know what they're going to say next, which I think is nonsense. And then, yeah, you know, you get they sensationalize not a lot of nonsense on the news. It's and it's part of their job, I guess, for ratings. It doesn't make sense to me, but it, it, when you're inciting yeah. fear, you cause bigger issues at the end of the day. Yeah, I got into an argument with uh, one of the big news people over that because. They just came out in the news that some chicken was poisoning people and you got to be careful and blah, blah, blah. And he said, I'm going to tell you what that chicken is that the, right after this commercial. So yeah. I called him up and said, why don't you tell him now? What if somebody eats the chicken between now and the commercial? Yeah, they got to get that money from the uh, from the advertisers. That's why. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, that's just wrong. So it was uh, Shepard Smith. Man. Yeah, I, I remember. Because I knew all, I knew all of the, the 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 news people. I know them all, basically personally. So let's do and this. A lot of them are good people, and a lot of them are just you know. Yeah, they're in it for the ratings. So let's do yeah, this, Norm. Get the let's get into the cron. Like, let's touch on your book. Let's talk about where the book begins and and how you. So for you, for Norm, 
how you see the OJ thing unfold, right? Let's talk before the murders. Um, Cause clearly in the book, it's, it's going to state there's been animosity between Nicole and OJ. And at what point does this, does this Glenn guy get involved? Well, the Glenn guy got involved when he started painting her house. Cause Glenn didn't just find her and go paint her house. He was put there. Right. Now the question that, that that I didn't understand, I still don't know the answer to, is who put him there. Now the first guy that was supposed to kill Nicole was a guy named William Waz, and he was paid. And this is in his proffer that he gave to the judge. He was paid by uh, uh, Robert Kardashian to do it. Huh. He wasn't paid by OJ which confused me. He said O.J. met him at the first meeting. It was O.J., him, and uh, and uh, uh, O.J.'s girlfriend uh, at the time. I can't remember her name right now. But they met at the, and it's in the movie, the name of the of the restaurant and everything. And they just talked about, you know, wanting him to follow Nicole, et cetera, et cetera. But then he said afterwards he was called to, to Robert Kardashian's home in Encino and was given a deal that, you know, to kill Nicole. No, I wasn't there, so I can't say, yeah, he did it or he didn't, but that's his testimony. And uh, you normally wouldn't put that in a testimony if it wasn't true. Yeah, I looked that Waz but, guy up too, man. He's a he's a, he's another big character. A lot of crazy, uh, his background's pretty crazy. Like he's got a connection yeah. to a lot of, like, uh, shady people. Yes, and, it, and it, I would have just blown that off as stupid and not a story if it wasn't in the newspaper, and I kept the newspaper article, that he was busted driving Paula Barbiera's car, following Nicole around, and there was a book of all of Nicole's whereabouts, and a twenty two caliber pistol, and a crack pipe in the car when he got busted driving her car. So I was thinking to myself, what would be the odds of some strange guy just stealing Paula Barbiera's car and riding around following Nicole. Because he said in his first deposition that that that's what uh, Robert Kardashian told him to do. He would get him a car and 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 he told him where to pick up the car, which was, you know, where, where Paula was working in the whole nine yards. So I'm sitting there reading the letters and going, well, you can't dismiss it because he was actually busted with the car. He got into an accident with it, is what it was, and that's why. Right, and he had a twenty two caliber, which is pretty so so people know. Twenty two caliber is the weapon of choice for hitmen in close counter shootings. Yeah, you yeah, you don't go you you don't shoot nobody far away with that. Right, yeah, that's that's an up close and personal weapon. Close. So So that gave me the idea, okay, and then right afterwards Glenn Rogers came into the picture. So the question is when the first guy failed, who who replaced him? Was it OJ or was it Robert? Right. Or was it the feds? Because, you know, he was an informant. Here's a big thing, too. Everything OJ does has a proxy. There's always a buffer between him and someone else. Always. Um, this is evident through his whole life. Uh, you know, can unless he was heated and calling Nicole directly or whatever. I mean, that look... That happens in relationships all the time. Uh, the results are no one usually dies, but he always used a proxy. Uh, yes, but he was always there. Right. He, he always had somebody there to do the hard, heavy work, just like in Vegas, but he had to be there to see it. Right. OJ is the kind of person who doesn't want you to do something about him seeing it and letting you know that he's in control. Yeah, it's like a narcissist in a sense. Yeah. So, you know, I knew that if, if Glenn was going over there, he would be there. And Glenn is, you know, basically Glenn, I look at him as sort of like the devil's rejects. The, the people that Glenn was with was just like them. And they're still operating in America. They're not done yet. Uh, you know, I've got, all the, I've got all his personal letters to his family where he tries to tell people where he buried other bodies. Yeah. Unfortunately, the police don't want to talk about any of that. They're just like, no, we don't want it. It's okay. I'm like, okay. So I was going to go out myself and start digging up the bodies, and I just haven't had the time. He, You know, that's you're right about that. They disregarded that. He said there was a number of other bodies. He was trying to give them description and location, 
and they were more yeah. they were very hyper focused on the bodies they knew about instead of building. I, I don't. That's a strange thing in itself, right? Because you would want. I, I, I would I would assume law enforcement would want to know the identities of other bodies, not just for a case, but for peace of mind for those families. Exactly. Like he he, told, he put it in a letter to, that he buried two people behind the the bus station in Vegas. And he, that, was, he was paid to hit those two people and get rid of them. Yeah. You, he, so a lot of stuff with him is. And here's the bizarre part. A lot of material with him because when you go to look it up in public record, it's sealed. Yeah, <laughs> you can't read it. <laughs> which is, I I could learn details of Ted Bundy, Dahmer, uh, B Cake. There's details that you could look up. None, none were, that are sealed. This seems to be the only guy who's, and I, I don't want to call him a serial killer. I want to call him a, a serial spree killer, right? Because it, it seems to me that he does things in big groups. Like a serial killer will kill, and there's a rest period of between individuals. This guy goes out, kills a bunch, and then takes a period of time off and then goes out and kills a bunch and, you know, and so on. So I think he never took any time off. I really don't. I think that you'll find that he's killed way more. He had claimed he killed 70-something, but I believe it goes way beyond that. Right, because he was always on the move. He, nev he was never yeah. in one place for a long period of time, and he always managed to maneuver himself in a position where there were people, uh, you know, an example would be that Mark Peters guy, uh, electrician, the guy was pretty well off, uh, and took took Glenn in for to house him for a while. He just he finds ways to get himself in circles of people that are beneficial to him. So he's a con artist on top of which. Uh, oh, big time, big time. He is very smart. That man is a very smart man. Yeah, I mean, so, so I've communicated with him. He knows what to do. He knows how to manipulate his words to try to lure you into different things, and you have to overlook all of that. So for he's OJ very, in that period for OJ. Uh, you were pretty close to him at, at some point in your observation. What was his, were you, were you close to OJ prior to the murder? No, no. Okay. I met him after the murder when nobody wanted him. Uh, he was in Miami, just got to Miami. It wasn't, I think probably a year after all that. And my attorney said that, well, I got you know, at the time I was, uh, I just took my company public and I was looking for things to promote and, you know, cause I'm good at that. Right. You know, and so I said, I can promote anybody, anything. It doesn't really matter what they are. You know, it's a challenge. And so that's why I told my attorney. So he brought me up OJ and said, can you promote him? You know, it's almost like he was calling my bluff. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat and thought about it. I'm like, well, that's pretty interesting. A preconceived murder, all around bad guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, it's probably for you. They, they felt it to be a challenge, right? This guy is, this is post murders. Uh, he's not getting movies. Yeah. He's not getting, he's definitely not playing football, right? He's way past his prime. No. So, so there was nothing. Nobody wanted to talk to him. I mean, he was just being booed everywhere. And I was like, I can do something with that. So what I did is I just started basically changing him around from the OJ Simpson. People think they know to the OJ Simpson, bad guy. Cause I found he made a good godfather figure. Right, right. And so I moved him into certain clubs where he became the godfather. And at the same time, I was able to connect with all of his friends. Every time we go to a city, his friends would show up. And they'd tell me a little bit about what they know. And so it was really just a really cool way to get an investigation done by bringing the suspect with me. Right. I, you know, it makes sense. So what was the relationship like between him and Kardashian post-murders? Or, you know, post, uh, I, I would say, I guess I'll say uh, post-verdict. Were they still close? No. Huh. None of them got along. Uh, you got to understand. Well, you can tell by just Robert's facial expressions when they said not guilty. He was expecting OJ to go to prison. Yeah. Because in, 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 so, in Robert's heart, if not the murderer, OJ absolutely had something to do with it. Well, you can say that, or you could say, like, he was already mad at O.J. for what O.J. had done to his wife, and maybe this whole plan was to put O.J. in prison. But probably so. You know, I... If you think about it, why would he hire William Waz to kill Nicole and drive Paula Barbiera's car knowing that that car would be traced back to O.J.? That's a good point. It's a very good point. So if you really think about it, maybe he was just upset that what he was planning didn't come to fruition. 
it makes you wonder um, with the whole Glenn Rogers thing. Did OJ think Glenn was going to play like a, a buffer between him and Ron while he spoke with Nicole and things went south? No, I think that uh, whoever gave him Glenn Rogers, he, OJ would never have found Glenn Rogers in the first place. Right. So whoever found Glenn Rogers would have had somebody in the police department in, in, in a connection to do that. OJ didn't have that. Now, yeah. Robert did because, you know, he used to be, a you know, he was a, an attorney. You know, there's something that, that didn't quite fit with reading all of it. Now, Glenn's painting Nicole's house. Nicole is a person of wealth. Typically, they hire yeah. companies they trust in. Tells me somebody along the line said, Nicole, hang on a minute. I got this guy. He could paint. I know him. He'll paint your house. I mean, I don't see her meeting Glenn Rogers in public. She's a She's a very public figure. Right, she's OJ's ex. I don't see a situation where she goes with like if you look at Glenn Rogers, his habits, he goes like to like country bars and dive bars, where Nicole not so much. And then mysteriously, uh Glenn is spotted at high end bars where Nicole would be. So someone connected these two with the intention that, that maybe they knew history of Glenn or because Glenn Rogers openly admitted to to people he killed before killing them that he's killed people. You know, yeah, <laughs> he's a he, uh, no, he, he's not ashamed of what he does, and, right? And, and he's upset. I mean, right now, Glenn's upset the fact that he killed those last five people and wouldn't have been in jail if it weren't for the police. Yeah, I mean, that's what's making him angry right now because he said they had me, they had me under arrest. If they would have just arrested me then for Nicole, I wouldn't have killed the people I'm in prison for now. He's in death row for the people that he killed, all of them, after Nicole. So you know, that being said, uh, maybe that's part of the suppression on the behalf of the LAPD. Like we dropped the ball with this guy. Here's a guy who very plausibly killed Nicole. Like this is a guy we let him go. Cause yeah. we're hyper-focused on OJ. We're going to take OJ down. And then the very guy we let go goes on to kill people across the country. Let's suppress this. So we don't look like assholes and become liable. You know, that's liability for them. Right. Yeah. It's a huge so black eye. Right. I mean, when you state it, when you put it that way, when you have a guy who's very, he's, he's a, he's already a, a formidable uh, killer, right? Like that's his career and he's in your sights and, and he's around Nicole and he's around Ron people state this and then they say, well, forget it. Let's, let's focus on OJ. He clearly did it. And let's be honest. Um, Martin Furman clearly had it in for OJ uh, for a lot of reasons, both personal and, and, and outside of that. So they let this guy go and he goes and kills people at, like everywhere. And so yeah, well, just here's here's what really gives the police away. They catch Glenn Rogers, and they interview him, right? Right. For the murders of Nicole. Now, when they catch him, he was already on America's Most Wanted for killing Mark Peters. Right. So why would they have let him go? That's a great question. I mean, think about it. You just caught a, a person who is on America's Most Wanted for killing Mark Peters. And he's, I mean, everybody, and, and going under the identity of Mark Peters. He had his license and everything under Mark Peters, his social security card, everything, Mark Peters. That's right. He stole, oh, it was, it was actually, it was his son's ID he stole. He was out no, there. It was, just, was it Mark? It was him. It was him, Mark himself. Wow. Wow. So he went by that guy. He killed all of his identity, his 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 rent receipts were all made out to Mark Peters. Well, it was Mark James Peters, so it's James Peters on some, Mark on some. So, so his room was was under that that name. Everything was under that name. Nothing was under Glenn Rogers to start with. Right. But yet, the, here they go and they arrest Mark Peters to question him, or or, or you know, a dead man. <laughs> Right, and, and the, the scary part is America's Most Wanted is a national television station that communicates with the FBI. So yeah. it's not like the guy, the, uh, you could look at this guy in his face and then compare the pictures they had him on America's Most Wanted. It's an instant connection. And and why didn't they allow fingerprints? Because had they, if they didn't release him straight away, the fingerprints would have came back to, to Glenn Rogers. Yep, and the knife he had in his pocket. 
Yeah, all of that's because they, the reason they arrested him. The only reason they arrested him was he was in an elevator with somebody else, and he uh, went violent and pulled out his knife and stabbed it next to the guy's face or something like that, basically threatening to kill him. And then they busted him. Wow! So here he is with the knife. When they arrest him, he got his knife back and everything's good. <laughs> and they let him go. Didn't check his truck or anything to do with any blood stains that could have been Nicole's. And he's sitting there saying, I killed Nicole, blah, 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 because he said on tape he's, he admitted all that. And they just say, no, you didn't, no, you didn't, no, you didn't, you got to leave now. And he said they gave him a plea deal. If he leaves state, no more questions would be asked. Huh. That's another bizarre that's thing what to he, do. <laughs> so, so why would you let a guy that you had, who was already wanted for murdering this other guy, not take away his knife or anything because he went to kill somebody right after right after he left the police department. I don't know if you know it. He killed another lady right there uh, like six blocks from Nicole's house. Wow. So the same way. Killed her the same way, but then burn her body up in a truck. It's uh, it's because then after that, he flees to Jackson, Mississippi, and then begins a whole new line of killing. Yeah. It's... I don't it, get, I don't he, get well, it. he followed back to his old roots, but if you look at some of... Well, I, I have him, I guess. Some of his letters, he's telling where he buried bodies all up and down those roads. He put street signs of like on this corner of this road and this road, I buried somebody right there. He sent these letters to his brother and his mom, and I got all the private letters. Yeah, you know, so also like a trying tr to get to people uh, and say, hey, and I've also got social security numbers, birth dates, and names of all probably his victims. I don't even know who they belong to, but why would he have them? That's a good point. I mean, they found I mean, they found one woman's earrings on his on his in his belongings from a murder uh, yeah. that he wasn't charged with, right? But it's her earrings in on his in his possession. I, I there's a lot of strange things surrounding this guy, Glenn. A lot. It's yeah. it's bizarre. Yeah. And um, it's beyond just Glenn, uh, you need to look at the family. I'm gonna have to now. Um, cause you know, so you really need to look at the family cause Glenn always said that he didn't do certain things. You know, he just covering for his brothers, etc. Well, the question is, did he do them all or, or were they covered? He said his dad killed over a hundred people. He did say so something in my like opinion that. that it was sort of like the devil's rejects that they're actually operating in America as we speak. Yeah, like they, they have a family property. He did say that there's a family property where there's like a mass graveyard, and yeah. no, and no law enforcement followed up with that. Nope, they don't want to know about it for some reason. It's really odd, but he was an informant, and I think that what happens is he knows so much about them, they're not going to mess with him, because he said in some of his letters that he learned how to work with them and how to control them. You know, Charles Manson, same thing. Uh, he was, I mean, for, if you look at that guy's rap record, it makes you question how the hell do he get out of jail every time? Like, and then go on to uh, basically influence the murder of a, a bunch of people. Uh, and later on, do some research, you find out that one of our acronyms were, were conducting a study with him and that he, he worked directly with him in some way or another. And so when you hear these things, uh, it's troublesome. Because this guy, Glenn, he's when you read about him, like he he's intelligent, too. Like, he tried to frame other people. He got lipstick in one crime scene and wrote, we found you, Glenn, uh, to kind of give the the idea that someone's after him and he's running and that they're exactly. the ones killing. Yeah. He's it's he's an intelligent person. Uh, yeah, he testified to a guy in uh, Chicago for the feds where he testified that he saw this other guy slice up this person with a knife, and so the other guy, I think, went to prison. But the question I had is it probably was Glenn. Yeah. And Glenn just said, oh, no, that guy did it, and that's how he got out of a lot of his troubles, I think. I think he just said, oh, no, that guy did it. I'm a witness for the feds, and he did it. So there's no. probably a lot of innocent people that's in prison that probably didn't do anything. Glenn probably did it, just pointed the finger to them. That's, that's, that's really troublesome. You know, there was speculation. I don't know if you remember. There was speculation that OJ's son might have did it. Yeah, that's just stupid. Yeah, I mean, I, I know his kids. I mean, I've checked his kids out. 
Yeah, they tried. His son doesn't have that type. His son has a little bit of an issue, but it's not like that. It's right. not like that type of an issue. It's uh, see, yeah. I watched this. William Deere came up with that idea, and William, I know I have nothing against William Deere. He, you know, that's his that's his thing. You know, that's what that's these detectives. They get on this one bandwagon of what they think happened, and and then they then they if you work hard enough, you can prove that's what it was. Or make it look like that's what it was. See, I never really had a direction because every time I go one direction, somebody else would come up and tell me something different. So I didn't have a direction. I just let all the pieces fall where they went. Everybody else I know that tried to solve this case all had a direction on what they thought happened, and then they would just go on and investigate that and try to put those pieces together. Agreed. And, and that, that's that's not how you do it. And the behavior of, of Mark Furman, uh, that really put a, a, a monkey wrench in everything. Because that, that guy, he tainted that entire investigation from the get-go. And he made it very personal. And it probably it probably played a major negative effect in the eyes of the public. So I think there was a little bit of pressure to move that case along, right? Well, I don't know how much Mark Furman tainted that, to be honest. I mean, like the glove they found behind O.J.'s house that they say Mark Furman threw there. Uh, I was told that's Glenn Rogers threw that there because he said in his words, he said that N-word weren't going to leave him holding the bag. He took the glove over there and threw one of them over the fence. That sounds like, and you know what? I, so just by you saying that, and then you study the cases of, of Glenn Rogers' other uh, crime scenes, that sounds like him. Sounds yeah, like something he did. the blood do. that was on the... On the on the sidewalk going to OJ's house, well, he was cut there, so that would be his blood. Hmm. So yeah. There, there's no real way of saying it wasn't. Yes, it may have had preservatives in it, some of it. So maybe they put some of the stuff there that wasn't there to make it look, you know, make the the trail more solid. No, yeah, I see what you mean. So let's do this. But, let's say Norm, you're you're now gonna direct a movie about the whole thing. The OJ, the, the the murders. Let's start. Let's let's have you walk us through from like say, the before the murders right up until the uh, trial. What do you think took place in chronological order? I think OJ and and, and uh, Robert Kardashian got in a huge fight over what he had done to to his wife, and, I, and at that point they weren't friends. But then OJ got into a situation where Nicole was doing a lot of drugs because they came to his uh, place there. In one of the interviews I've got, he said they came to where he was working at on set and they told him about all the drugs that was going through Nicole's house and all the prostitutes. So OJ thought he could stop the drugs and prostitutes because he's a big man and that's just what he thinks. He always thinks he can control everything. And he went to Robert and said, here's what I've got. I need to deal with this. And then he went into Nicole's house. That's when they got in that big fight. And Nicole said when he got into the big fight the, to the to the lady on the phone there, the 911 operator, she said, and that's a quote, OJ just took my book with all my contacts and everything in it. Huh. So that's where that book went. And so he took that book and he gave it to Robert Kardashian, I think. And that's when Robert found somebody that would deal with the issue, the first person being William Waz. William Waz got in trouble, crashed the car, and didn't finish the job. And then came in Glenn Rogers. Right. And all they wanted, I think he wanted, was just to stop her from, you know, having all the drugs and prostitutes running around inside his house. Yeah, with the kids around. You know, Yeah, so and he, he was going to confront Ron. And so he had him bring Ron over to the house, uh, Glenn, and O.J. was already in the gate. He was already sitting on the steps. That's why Ron couldn't go nowhere. When he walked through the gate, you notice he couldn't go nowhere but up in the bushes. Right. And, and then Glenn okay. walked behind him, and they had him cornered in the bushes. And I think that, that Ron got scared, which any normal person would with two big guys in front of you yelling at you. And he pulled out a knife like a mistake. And O.J. always puts his finger in your face when he's yelling at you. That's just natural for O.J. Right. And I think Ron just cut him, just, you know, acting like, get your finger out of my face. 
cut his finger. That's why his finger got cut. OJ ran off like a baby, like what's his name said. And then it was up to Glenn and, and Ron to fight it out to the end. And then Glenn went over to OJ's house to get paid because he said, I wasn't paid to kill somebody. I was paid to his backup. <laughs> Right. And OJ had already took off and left town. So then he went back, got Nicole, called her, went back to Nicole's house, knowing she'd have a little bit of cash on her to get paid. And when she came to the door, they just walked around the side of the house so she could give him the cash for the Coke. And then when they got to the side, that's where Ron would have been. And he just cut her throat, dropped her down the stairs and took the money and, and, and some of the jewelry. And he pawned the jury at the jury stores, which we found. Uh, That's under, why the brooch and everything was on there. What what name was it pawned under? Uh, I guess it was Glenn Rogers because the feds got it, and except for the one brooch that the mom has. Hmm. You know, again, so a couple of things. OJ, for the – Ron Goldman was not a little guy. Whether you're no. stabbing him or not, he's throwing defensive blows back. OJ yeah. had no visible marks on his body that, that's other than a cut on his finger. Nothing speaking to I had a, a physical altercation with a with a pretty big guy. Right? No. So no, no nothing that, there. Yeah. So we didn't get to examine Glenn the next day, other than we know that he called out of work because his he fell through the ceiling or something like that working at home. Which yeah, means the he, ceiling fell on him, and he was all beat up, and he couldn't walk. He was all bruised up. He said, "Yeah, so he and that's that's what the that's what the letter says from his boss. We got a letter. Yeah, so he clearly had a physical altercation that he took bruising from, and no, so there's no photos of Glenn post you know the the murders, right? Because uh, it had they taken photos of Glenn after, I think it would have made the jury and people say, "What the hell is it? Why is he so beat up?" You know, I it definitely I think that, that that whole case was mistreated. Now, Glenn, um, the due diligence needs to be done to find out how that guy got involved with them. Because, like said, Nicole wanted her house painted. She's a she has money. She would have called the service right the, in the phone book at the time. Not just this well, guy. Glenn. No, usually a, a famous people don't call the service. A famous people calls their attorney or, their, or somebody they know to say, you know, right. do you know this reputable? Because they don't go and just go through the phone book. You may get a serial killer. Right, but nobody... So whoever, whoever called them, she knew who they were. So right. it could have been she called her, her girlfriend, uh, 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 Chris Kardashian, and Chris may have said, oh, let me find out. Maybe Robert knows somebody. Right, and at said point, Nobody in LA is going to use this guy Glenn, who's he's a, basically a nomad, right? Who just says, "Hey, I know how to paint." They're going to want someone of reputation. Someone put him in place for that, as you yeah. say, right? Someone suggested him to her, and whoever that is, is the key to the mystery because whoever That's that it. right, so whoever put him in play, suggested Nicole. Here's this guy; he could paint your house at a fair price. Uh, on my honor. Whoever that person was is who orchestrated this whole thing. Exactly. And that's the problem is trying to find that person. Was it OJ? I don't know because OJ probably doesn't know a lot of painters. Right. Uh, uh, Robert could have been Robert. Robert would have known about Glenn Rogers because, you know, he was connected to the police department and would have known Glenn Rogers' background. Right, right. Because he would know this guy. He's on America's Most Wanted. I can, I can manipulate this guy. Well, here's some money. Yeah. Here's what you're going to do, and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, like you said, someone who is paying attention to America's Most Wanted or has a connection to law enforcement would know exactly. who that guy was. They would know. Right. Even the prosecutor would know. Exactly. Maybe they were trying to, uh, you know, there's a chance, and I'm not going to say, you know, yes or no, but the way the drug deals was being done, it appears that Nicole was the drunk kingpin, not the not the other ones. Right. And, 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 and that's why, you know, in some people's minds that she was running a prostitution ring and drugs out of that house. So maybe the feds were looking at her and needed somebody who could go in there and, okay, find out what kind of deal she's doing. And uh, Glenn knows that kind of stuff. That's why they used to put him into places like that. Right, because at that time she's living off of uh, OJ's alimony, and it's that's it's yeah. not 
it wasn't like substantial enough to, to hold up the lifestyle she's accustomed to. So it would make sense. Actually, for her to find there were, actually, there was really no alimony. To be honest, OJ in his own thing, because he told me this, and I got on record okay. on recording. He paid out of his divorce in cash for one settlement check. Huh. So there was no alimony, et cetera. That's why she needed money from him. That's why the photographs were in the safe deposit box. If anything ever happens to me, these, these pictures will get out. Oh, that's right. That is right from uh, from uh, the photos from a, uh, uh, a domestic I- incident. Yes. So I mean, I think she kept those in there as a as a way of getting cash. So he was coming I out know. of pocket. That she probably depleted that that settlement, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And, well, she, of course she she was heavy into drugs and doing parties, giving all her friends drugs too. They all used to come over there and do them, and so sooner or later you're gonna run out of money. Right. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, when you tie it together like that, now the idea of a Glenn Rogers becomes more uh, of an easier thing to process. What in that in that circle? Yeah, because he told in in one of his letters that he worked for the feds in Vegas regarding the two bodies behind the bus station. Huh. So he has connections with those people. And he said, I used to work there. I'd, I'd go into a town and say I'm an informant and then they would put him on different jobs. That Glenn guy, I say it a lot. He's uh, he's, he's a, there's a lot of like suspect things taking on going on in his life. Like he's in, he's on death row. Right. And I think they're trying yeah. to petition, uh, getting him off death row with the, what there is, if there's an agreement for something. And, and even then it's so shady because when you go to pull his record or read about him, it's so vague and a lot of stuff is suppressed and a lot of stuff is sealed. And even with OJ, why is, o- I can understand them sealing the information for JFK. I can understand them sealing the information for an alleged alien spacecraft. I can see them sealing information for anything with our, you know, our government, but OJ, <laughs> it's bizarre. Exactly. And Nicole, her files are sealed. Why are they sealing all those? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Other than LAPD said, holy shit, we let a serial killer loose and he killed a lot of people and we look like idiots now. Yeah. And then and, and in the files with OJ, I'm sure because OJ's attorney interviewed Glenn Rogers. Now, that was a twist I wasn't really expecting. I was expecting, you know, the prosecutor to find him because he got caught in that elevator fight. But what made OJ's attorney interview him? Because at the time, you gotta understand, he was running under Mark Peters. He wasn't Glenn Rogers. So how did OJ's attorney talk to him? But he did. It's in the newspaper. OJ's attorney interviews Glenn Rogers. But then in the article, it also says that OJ's attorney said that there's no way Glenn Rogers could have done it. He wasn't in town at the time. But that's a contradiction. We know he was. Yes, but you know, some people look at that as well, but he was under Mark Peters, so we can say he wasn't there. Oh, I see. So by name. Uh, <laughs> so that that's their out. But why, if you're OJ's attorney, why would you say he couldn't have done it? I would have said, oh, I think he did it for sure, just to throw suspect onto him and off my client. That whole thing stinks, man. You know, the whole. There's, so so I, that's why I know that OJ knew Glenn Rogers was involved. When I sent him that letter in prison, I sent him a letter in prison that Glenn Rogers sent to me. Right. And I expected OJ to come back with, wow, you found out who killed my wife, da, da, da. Instead, he came back with, I don't know you anymore and I'm not talking to you anymore. And that was the last we talked. You know. It scared OJ knowing I, I was so close to Glenn Rogers. You know something, Norm, between you and I, uh, you you do filmmaking. Uh, I do a podcast. We're considerably journalists, right? Why don't I, basically? I, let's try to find. I would like to find a way for you and I to interview Glenn. Right? I mean, I don't yeah. know the likelihood Glenn of that happening. It, the problem with Glenn is Glenn will tell you one thing and then tell you something else the same time he's telling you the first thing. Uh, so he manipulates. Yes, big time manipulates. I mean, I've got recordings from him in prison where other people were interviewing him on, you know, and they gave them to me. This one lady spent 20 years working on that Glenn Rogers case and all of her documents and recordings and everything. She gave it all to me. 
Huh. And she said, I, I don't know what to say. You're the only one I know that would have had the balls to go over and deal with this. That's what she told me. <laughs> she said, because this is what I got. This is a lot. And so I've got terabytes of stuff. But I noticed in there that she, he would tell her what she wanted to hear, not tell her the truth. Right. But then every now and then he would slip out with the truth just to let her know who he was. Ted Bundy was the same way. The exact same you know, way. He, he was very, he's, so everything you see and read about him, you really have to read it two or three times, and then you can pick out the, what's really went down. Yeah, because some of the women in the bars. Some of the killings that he did, you know, some of the things that he mentioned. You know, it's like the Oakland County child killer out in uh, Michigan. That was a big case. Uh, they still haven't solved that case, even though they, they could solve that case if they just, you know, take my stuff. Because he said that his dad did that with his brother. Huh. He said, my brother, what's his name, went rogue it, and did that. So they're, they're like, in, in for you, they're suspected in that in that, that murder case. Oh, yeah, because they said that my brother went rogue. He carried, and they even have a picture of him standing next to the car, the same color and everything of the, uh, uh, of the whatever it was, Pinto or whatever that was seen driving around when the kids were found. Some of them were, you know, and he said that they used to make them play uh, sex games and they would record them for other people. Huh. I mean, he gave a whole description on what he did to the kids and everything and what his father or whatever and his brother did. Do we know the father's still alive? I mean, Glenn's 60. No, now. he's dead. Yeah. He's dead. So and the, 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 the brother who did that, I guess, just died. He got hit by a truck. I think the brother, what was the brother, Gary? Was it Gary? Because I know no, there's a there's was, a clay. No, it wasn't Gary. It was uh, it was uh, no, it was neither one. It was uh, there's it, one more. It was an elder brother too. Because uh, I think yeah. I think Glenn was the youngest of them all. Um, I think it was the elder brother that, that did it. Yeah, there's there there's so much mystery surrounding those people. Uh, even the brother Clay, who just came out and said, "Oh, my brother definitely did it," and then there's a. Someone contradicting him. Yeah, but if you also listen to what all he says, my brother did it. I know I was there. I helped him load one of the dead bodies in the back of the car, right. blah, blah, blah. So, you know, just that was part of a movie or some shit. Right, yeah, yeah, documentary, and he was trying to he was trying yeah. to make a feature film out of it. So he his motivation was money, to turn around and, and throw his brother, brother under the bus. Sort right. of, but at the same token, he described some of the murders to a T, and he was there, so wasn't he an accessory? You would think, right? Why is he not in cuffs? There's, I'm telling you, there's I mean, a lot of weird stuff surrounding this. A lot. Yeah. So there's this. Everything is a. Uh, is not what it's not what it should be. That's for sure. And and trying to solve that, and I was like, I can't solve all the murders in life. So I was like, I'm just after who killed Nicole. That was my own thing, and that's that. That's what I kept coming back to: who killed Nicole. But his background is so terribly bad, and to be painting her house, you cannot, you know, say, oh, a serial killer in my house but he probably didn't do it right yeah not to mention yeah, that, that nicole is. the way she died is a, if you look at the victims of glenn that are known stabbed mm -hmm. throat cut almost the same way almost identically yeah. the only difference between yeah. those victims and nicole is he had full control over the environments with his other victims where nicole didn't have a controlled environment he killed her the same way but typically he would wash the bodies and clean the evidence up where he could he could do that in a controlled environment. He could not do that where Nicole and Well, Rob he didn't were. really he didn't really clean up. If you really read about those other victims, he didn't clean up the stuff. He played in it. Yeah. Yeah. That like, was a little different. Like he had the one in the bathtub and it wasn't to clean her up. He just liked to watch the blood run out and run down the drain and, and the other one he did it in the bed, he just stabbed her over and over and over until the bed would just soak with blood. Right, the water bed. Yeah, that's weird. What a yeah, weirdo, man. Yeah, he just wanted. Uh, he just he played. It was his. He was like a mouse with a toy. That's scary, and yet it and, is. And yet they no, they didn't make it. Someone in LAPD from that era made a connection between him and Nicole, and was probably suppressed because there's only there's only one other high profile murder in America that has the same amount of suppression and sealed files, and that's JFK. That's it. That's, yeah. that's our president. Yeah, and they had no reason to do that, and those people would still be alive. So whatever they did, they should not have done it. And I think it was just done because they had a plan on how to get O.J. And 
They couldn't go back on that. OJ was a jealous rage. You can't go back and say, no, it's not a jealous rage. There's a hitman involved now. Because, now, you know, Glenn Rogers wasn't just a serial killer. He admitted he was a hitman, too. Right. You know, people could pay him, and he'd kill somebody. He didn't care. Yeah, he his I mean, one of his large outside of the pleasure of killing, one of his larger motivations were money because everywhere he yeah. went, he stole. You know, so I mean, he the the I think the car he was caught in finally was a, one of the victims. It was a, a white Ford. Yes, yep, it was her car, and he took her car and and killed her, and that's how he got caught because he was in her car. Yeah, because he took uh, Mark Peters' car and ID to L- to but California. You'll never, but you'll never catch the knife. Whatever happened to his knife? Why didn't they check to see if Nicole's blood is somewhere wedged inside his knife? Right. Or his shoes or in that car itself? Because, you know, some things stay with you for a while. You know, if, if you use a knife on somebody, usually you like that knife and you keep that knife and you reuse it. You right. don't buy a new knife every week from the knife store. I agree. I, you know, so, I, mean, I agree. The, the police have everything they need to solve this case. It's already sitting there. They just don't want to do it. So do you, here, let me ask you before we get to closing, uh, do you think OJ makes a deathbed confession or is he just too proud? I don't think he can make a confession because honestly, I don't think OJ knows what the hell happened. I think the only thing he knows is there was a fight when he left. Right. And that's all he knows. So his and he gu- probably has no clue what really took place when he left. That's why, you know, he dropped the glass when he was in the hotel. I don't think OJ knows other than the fact that him and him and Ron were fighting, you know, Glenn and Ron were fighting when he left to go to the airport. Ah, so that so now when you see the guilt on OJ's face, it's because he left a scene where uh, a guy was fighting with Ron. He didn't want any part of it because he'd already got injured. Um, when I say injured, a small cut, he leaves, yep. right? So OJ leaves. He goes home, uh, books a flight to Chicago, then finds out Nicole's dead. So he's actually devastated when he gets the call because he's like, holy shit. Yes. Now, he's also guilty because he knows that the person that did this it was put there by him. So, yep, Or came there with him. It may have been somebody else who hired him and said, hey, go with OJ over here. Right, right. So you know, either way. Thing, but either way, I, OJ was a, you know, he was conspiracy to commit murder. And he never was tried for that. So he can be retried for that. I always wondered too, because the gloves, the bloody gloves, one thing, uh, and you know, the shoe prints or whatever, but wh- that's a lot of, when you're stabbing someone, there's a lot of arterial blood spray where, where the clothes he wore would be soaked in blood. It would exactly. be in his skin. There was no blood on any of OJ's clothes. None of it is drained. Nothing. Yeah. There would so be, it, it, I mean, the, the, he wasn't there for all of that. There would be significant blood in his truck. Significant. Not a little bit yeah. on the door, not some on the steering wheel. Significant blood would be everywhere because. Exactly. Yeah, that whole thing stinks, man. And then you have this guy, Glenn, who was probably saturated in blood, who, because all eyes are on OJ, had ample time to go either burn or dispose of the, cl- the clothing, clean himself up. And Well, he probably was wearing paint clothes. He just took them off like a painter, didn't throw them in the trash. Right. I mean, he had ample time to do because all, all eyes are on OJ. Meanwhile. And the, and the, and the witness we, we found that was with Nicole the night before stated that the guy that she was with, and she did, she gave a description of Glenn Rogers to a T. That's All right. the way down to his shoes. And she described his shoes as Bruno Magli. And she said he was wearing black gloves, just like the ones found at the crime scene. That's right. I forgot about that. So, I mean, Everything that she described in those gloves come from uh, uh, what Terrence or whatever. Yeah, and you know those those are expensive items. And you know what? That's public record. Those statements she made is public record. You could read that. Yeah. Why, why was well, that overlooked? You can if you can find them, but they're they're, they're she's uh, she's been afraid for many years to come out because she she was afraid they'd come kill her. Because she she really thinks that Dodie Fiad had something to do with it too, because she didn't know if Dodie Fiad had hired him because he was sitting right next to Dodie Fiad. Oh yeah, that's right. I see. There's a lot and I so forgot she about. Was, she was afraid of that, and she's like, I I don't know if Dodie Fiad and you know Dodie Fiad, all the people who were with Dodie Fiad had those gloves on, which of course came from their store. So it would would lead me to think that okay, they 
Dodie Fire was there. Maybe Dodie Fire just, you know, sometimes you give gifts to people. Like, here's a pair of gloves. I guess I got them from my store. You're uh, right. You know, that Dodie Fire guy, too, he had a lot of shady stuff in his background, too. A lot. I mean, mm -hmm. someone alleged that he had cartel connections. Well, I'm sure he did because he, you know, that night Nicole was bragging at the table about taking Dodie's plane and going to pick up a shipment of cocaine in Washington. Man. That and that witness heard all of that and said, I don't really want to hear no more of this. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, as uh, a, imagine. Uh, that, that's why I'm thinking that, 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 that there's way more. There's way more to this than what people want to know. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I would like to do? It would be kind of hard. Or maybe there's enough time passed. Maybe you get one of today's seasoned detectives, a homicide guy today, who you erase OJ's name, erase, get all the names out of the picture, and just speak the case to him. And I bet you he points all fingers point at Glenn, uh, at Glenn Rogers. I'm betting it. Yeah, but you, could, you, couldn't, you couldn't do that because it was too the big. The puzzle is so complicated. It's simple as it's really simple as shit. I mean, really, it's simple. There, there, there's no way really around. Okay, Nicole dealt in drugs and prostitution. OJ wanted to stop. Here comes a serial killer who was probably put in by the feds just to watch her because they were going to bust her. Instead, all hell breaks loose and he ends up killing her. I mean, it's this. <laughs> yeah. You know what? What? What it should be is actually a play on Broadway. <laughs> Agreed. It's going to I mean, come this, down to again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really it, it, here's I mean at the end of the day it boils down to this who introduced Glenn to Nicole as a painter that's what it all exactly. comes down to that is the key to it all because that that's guy it. is if definitely you can figure the, that out and the only reason that I think that the, that that the Kardashian had something to do with it is because he was the one who hired the first guy right why would he not hire the second guy agreed I agree because again so people know. Uh, the guy who who introduced Nicole to Glenn as a painter is the architect of the entire thing, easily. Yes, and, and it could have been just to get OJ back for what had happened to his wife, and because you know you gotta understand when when OJ broke Chris uh, Jenner's vagina, right? I guess that's I don't know a lot of people don't know that, but that's what happened in the in the jacuzzi, and then you know she goes up to his room and asks him to take her to the hospital, and he says no, have Robert do it. And Robert had to take her to a hospital. That would be sort of a breaking point for most men. I agree. And that would cause a problem. Now, they've all got divorces right after that incident. And Robert lost everything he had, his family, his kids, basically everything. And OJ was getting back with Nicole. He had already been dating Nicole, getting back with the families. There's actually a picture of all of them out at Easter just before she died. Him, Nicole all the Kardashians, everybody but Robert Kardashian. He was the only one missing in that picture. Huh. Everybody else was there. So he had so, motive. Oh, yes, he has a motive because OJ was getting back with her, the person who took everything away from him. Wow. I mean, <laughs> you know. So if I was him, I'd have an anger issue. And, oh, OJ would come up to me, hey, will you help me, uh, uh, Rob? I've got a problem here with these drug dealers. I can see Robert going, oh, yeah, I'll help you, OJ, just like you helped me with my family problems. Yep. And put her, <laughs> and, yeah, and put her in harm's way knowingly. Yep. Yeah. It, it, Knowing it, that he would be able to take everything away from OJ just like OJ took everything away from him. In a way, he succeeded, <laughs> you know? He did. The irony, he won. Because you can see, you know, when you look at the uh, – the, uh, If that's what happened, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if – when you look at the trial and you look at Kardashian's face throughout the whole thing, he seems dis detached, you know? He oh yeah. He doesn't. That's he, why in the movie, I, I, I show his face when they say not guilty. His face wasn't of excitement. His face was of a confusion. Dread. Like, Oh my God, this ain't supposed to be going down like this. Yeah. It's totally wrong from what it should have been. That's why we highlighted it in the movie. The make or break moment for that trial is when OJ tried the gloves on. And they didn't fit. Uh, no. Some people alleged because he had arthritis and his hands swelled up, but I don't buy that. I think they just didn't fit. I think they would have fit. They didn't fit they, because they were Glenn's. Right. <laughs> they are Glenn's gloves. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. And OJ knew it. So he's like, they ain't going to fit me. Those are Glenn's gloves. <laughs> that's why he you was know, very so quick to try them on. He didn't even hesitate. 
He didn't even no, hesitate. He, yeah, he absolutely knew those weren't his gloves. I got to tell you, man, this whole case with OJ is beyond strange. Beyond strange. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, again, if you put that case in today's, one of today's detectives and it, you eliminate all the names, I don't know what direction. I mean, eventually they, they, I think today's detectives, you remove the glamour from it, you remove the names, looks at Glenn Rogers, like this guy painted her house. Uh, who is this guy? And they would have looked deeper into that guy and they would have eventually made the connection to America's Most Wanted, figured out, wow, this guy's a murderer. It's a no-brainer. And then eventually they would have said, well, how did this guy get involved with this circle of people? And then they would have discovered through Glenn how the meeting came. And maybe would have found Kardashian. This whole case could have went a whole different direction with, you know, had it been looked at cleanly anyway. Exactly. And I think, you know, that... It's like William was. William was. Well, William was in his proffer stated that he he, he was hired by OJ. So in a way, I don't think OJ knew what was going on. I think OJ was a pawn in this whole thing. Right. And, and it, when you put it, when you frame it in a way where it seems like a revenge, it makes more sense because OJ seemed very in the dark. Uh, I don't think OJ was smart enough to orchestrate that. No, OJ doesn't. He just falls into stupid shit like he did in Vegas. Right. OJ, you know, is like a little kid. He really is. He's never been out in the real world. He's like a little child. Everywhere we went, I had to tell him, "Okay, OJ, you go here, you go here, you go here. You hold his hand, and you take him places." That's what OJ's used to. Right. And it's been like that for so, him since yeah, high school. Doing that. Yeah, he's not going to do that. He he got in, you know, he got in bed with Robert Kardashian doing mo all this stuff. But you got to understand, Robert basically gave everything OJ had to OJ. You know, brought him into uh, you know all of the business deals they were doing together. So you know, OJ made a lot of money and became very wealthy off of Robert Kardashian. That's, that's crazy. why I wonder if Robert Kardashian's like I gave OJ everything he has, and yet OJ took everything I had away from me. You know, it's when you when you frame it that way, especially. So look how close Kardashian was to OJ through the whole trial, through the build up to it, and and and, and then thereafter they're just done. It's like he wanted yeah. to make sure he monitored how it ran and make sure that it went the way he thought it was going to go. When it didn't go the way he wanted, he terminated the, the friendship. Exactly, because he was very supportive of OJ in the beginning, right? When when just after the announcement of the murders. When they arrested OJ, Robert was there the whole time by his side, uh, through the, through yeah. all the through all of it. And then right when it's over, they just done. It's like Robert said, "Well, I didn't get what I want. I'm done." It's t it's crazy. That's this whole story, mind blowing, very mind blowing. Yes, it is. Nor before we close, let's talk about your books and where people could find them. Uh, right now, my book is at WhoKilledNicole.com. You can get it off my website. Uh, I think it's it, anywhere you can buy books, Barnes and Nobles and everywhere is supposed to have my book. I don't know where they're at right now. Okay. Uh, but it is put out by Simon & Schuster. But if you want a, you know, a copy of it from my website, whokillnicole.com. All right. I'll put that in description so people can find it. Uh, yeah, so it'll be in description. People can find it in description. And uh, as far as the documentary itself, I would like to get that out again. Because that was a, the documentary yeah. was, for me, it was game changing. It, it, it's the only yeah. reason I even. Well, they're working on that right now. Actually, I've got a big company that that wants to put it out internationally. So we shall see if they do. They're they're working hard at it, and, and I've got my fingers crossed. Indeed. Uh, Hopefully soon. So that's what I told them. I'd like to get this done, but it's a big company. It's part of somehow part of Sony. So right. there's a good chance that when it comes out, it'll come out big. Well, I look forward to it. So those of you listening right now, we're going to say good night, good evening, good day, whatever it is for you. And I'm going to talk to Norman Post.